will be given a unique opportunity <laughs> to show their talent to America and the top players in the art world. Fantastic. Mentoring the artist is renowned auctioneer Simon de Puri. I know you can do it. So I want these artists to seize this opportunity and grow in the process. It was a bold move to photograph yourself. I can see that in a gallery. Judging their work is senior art critic for New York Magazine, Jerry Salt. A great artist has a unique vision, obsession. They're someone willing to fail flamboyantly. And gallery owner, Bill Powers. I'm looking for someone that has real presence in their work and a magnetism on the wall. One artist will emerge from the pack to take the grand prize. A solo show at the world famous Brooklyn Museum. A cover story in Blue Canvas Magazine and $100,000 furnished by the 2012 Fiat 500. This is Work of Art, the next great artist. Kimia Nawabi, and I'm from Durham, North Carolina. I think when people first meet me, they think I don't have a care in the world and I'm super bubbly and happy-go-lucky. But I do have a very dark interior. I love that being an artist brings you places like this. I mean, if I was a dentist, do they have opportunities like this? I don't know. Hi. How are you? My name's The Suck Lord. You say the Suck Lord. The Suck Lord. The Suck Lord. Yes. Okay. The name Suck Lord comes from the suckiness, which is my self-deprecating misanthropic side, and then the Lord, which is my megalomaniacal self-aggrandizing side, together in one word. I take bits and pieces of other toys, switch the parts around, sculpt pieces, thereby infusing it with an original meaning, and I make my living doing it. It's kind of like an Andy Warhol thing. It's like he had soup cans and I had stormtroopers. How you doing? I'm Dusty. I'm the suck one. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. Hello. My name's Dusty Mitchell, and I'm from Mountain View, Arkansas. Check it out. It's a tiny town. I've just been kind of plucked out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, I've never been to the Brooklyn Museum until now. Oh, this is so cool. Never seen crayons used this way before. <laughs> I'm an art teacher at a public elementary school, so my work has always had some kind of childhood reference in it. This is yours with the crayon? Yeah, that's fine. You're going to be hard to beat. <laughs> My name is Hugo, I'm 33, and I'm from Paris, France. This is a self-portrait? Yeah. Where's your face? Hugo's piece doesn't do anything for me. I didn't see a portrait there. Very Cubist. I do abstract line drawing. It's very, very train of thought. Seeing his self-portrait, I didn't expect, like, tall, dark, and handsome for some reason. He's got the accent, and I can see him in the studio, like, painting nudes. All right, so let's see everyone. How did he pull that off? Hey, everyone. Hello. I'm Young. Young, everybody's already been talking about your piece, man. Oh, OK. <laughs> What's yeah. going on there? Both of my parents were going through terminal cancers at the time, and my dad actually passed away in November. Um, so this is the last family portrait that I have with my parents. Hey, don't look, Mom. <laughs> I was always a very imaginative, you know, creative kid because I was an only child. So instead of having brothers and sisters to play with, I had my imagination. Hi, Jasmine. Nice to, nice to meet, to meet you. you. I was born on a hippie commune where there was nothing to do other than play outside or make art. I'm committed to being an artist because I don't need to fit into the popular culture. Hey, there's the new girl. What's your name? Hi, I'm Lola. Hi, Lola. My name's the Suck Lord. Hi, Suck Lord. What is this burden you're carrying? It's a sculpture that I made. Is that the idea, that it's burden for you? I wasn't being that strategic about it. I feel like I'm blushing because, for whatever reason, I find him kind of attractive. I think this girl's a vegan. Oh, God, what is that? Uh, Here she comes. We had just come around to your piece. Oh, cool. I make a lot of visceral tableau out of um, dough and jelly. I study the history of anatomical dissection. It looks like she's playing with these gross dead things. And I think she's going to attack me. <laughs> Hi, 
Hi, my name's Leon. My name's Tooth. Uh, this is my interpreter. He'll be with us. Um, his name is Bill, because obviously I can't hear. My name is Leon Lim. I was born deaf. When I graduated from high school in Malaysia, I got a scholarship. And I think that was the moment when my parents realized that their image of deaf people not being able to do anything was false. So did you install this in the trains? I asked the MTA permission, got permission. Oh, you got permission. If not, they'll give you a ticket and you'll get in trouble with the police. I know all about so, that. I've definitely been caught writing graffiti and have gotten locked up in Chicago. <laughs> what are you doing actually here? Spray painting. Art on the street and art in the gallery is really merging together right now. What are they? They're my old baseball cards. Love it. Another nerd in the mix. <laughs> wow, this is incredible. Yeah. What are these made of? Full paper. Growing up, I was pretty social, but maybe on the shy side. I guess I was a little bit of a weirdo. I'm really nervous, and I'm just thinking, I don't want to be the one that sucks. I wanted to do something that was kind of like a stop motion animation, but uh, freeze framed all together, um, but kind of became like a party banner. Yeah. <laughs> I like the party banner idea. <laughs> Sarah is very, very perky, and it scares me just a tad. <laughs> To be honest, I'm not this fully confident artist. Right. Like, I'm on this journey and I want to show, you know, the different sides of that. I do a lot of work with video and I always have been a real big fan of kind of f***ing with people to see what they'll do. So you sure you want to do this? Yeah, be on the show. It's a reality show. Basically, it's a portrait of having a debate with myself about whether or not I want to be on a reality show. Which is the guy that's against the reality show? One with the baseball cap. He lost, didn't he? There they are. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Work of Art, The Next Great Artist. I am China Chow, and this is Simon de Puri, a leading figure in the international art world, chairman and chief auctioneer of Philips de Puri. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello. Simon. You had a chance now to look at each other's work. We have sculptors, we have painters, video artists. One of you is a street artist, all taking part in this extraordinary competition. I'm going to be here to help you along, give you advice, and I hope you will all be bold, be brave, be amazing. <laughs> Simone is esteemed in the art world. He's kind of like this old world European count. I imagine him living in a castle somewhere. I do already know the suck lord. I had the privilege of buying some of his works. I even had the privilege of auctioneering some of his works. I feel a little bit of fear, like, oh, does suck lord have an advantage? How can I sell Simone some of my pieces? Simon will be with you every step of the way until one of you takes home the grand prize of $100,000 furnished by the 2012 Fiat 500 and your own solo show right here at the world-renowned Brooklyn Museum. Right. <laughs> if I get the solo show at the Brooklyn Museum, I would be the happiest person alive. I mean, that's why I'm here. Before we leave, China and I want to take you to the actual home where the winning artist is going to have their solo show. So, come with us. Enjoy the art. Is this like the thrift store art show? It's the weirdest art ever. It's all thrift store art or like paintings made out of knitwear. There's hair on one of the pieces. I'm smelling kitsch. <laughs> uh, just a little. I really don't like the colors of this. Like, oh, it's hideous. I'm so feeling this. Sparkly wizard art. It's not a wizard, it's Gandalf. Oh! And the sword's name is Glamdring, by the way. I love it. I'm not a highbrow kind of guy. I like crappy stuff. And if I had walked into that as a real art show, I would have loved it. Guys, what do you think of the gallery? It's intense. <laughs> It is time for your first challenge. Yes. <laughs> Each of you will choose one of these works and transform it into a piece that's worthy of hanging in the gallery. <laughs> this art 
It reminds me of what you see at a tag sale. So I'm thinking, what am I going to be able to pick that I can work with? It is very important that you keep a recognizable part of the work intact and make it work within your style. You will have until midnight tonight and only one hour tomorrow to finish your work. One artist will win this challenge and one of you will be going home. You have five minutes to select your piece. You guys ready? Yes! yes. Lord of the Rings is sort of a religious text for me because it encompasses the epic journey that life is. You got my frog. You were standing right next to it. I know, I couldn't choose. <laughs> it's my frog. And I don't really do sculpture, so I was like, what the hell am I gonna do with this thing? What attracts me to the wooden carving is uh, the detail in the composition. It's the art that I think fits the best my style. I'm feeling really indecisive. My brain hurts a little and it just feels impossible to choose one thing. You have one minute until you have to make your choice. Catherine picked the most hideous thing in the room. I don't know what anybody could do with that. Okay, artist, that's time. You guys have made some interesting choices. I will see you tomorrow at the gallery. Bye, thank you. Artists, let's head to your studios and get to work. I'm excited to see our studio, but I'm also nervous because that means the clock is ticking and I have a hundred things racing through my head. Coming up on Work of Art. I am confused to see in which direction you're going and I'm a little worried. The studio space is awesome. As a street artist, I spend most of my time working in abandoned buildings, rooftops, train tracks, and jail. So this is amazing. Now I know what I'm doing. I would, I'm going to sit in the same spot all day. Right, and then we have to take a piece of schlock art and transform it into something that has your own style within it. We have until midnight tonight and one hour tomorrow to finish our pieces. I'm feeling pretty good at right now, but the casting part will probably freak me out. My initial idea is to take this sculpture and use her body language and convey there is this little creature that's being protected by another creature. I'm a painter, and my paintings are a combination of narrative, perverse sexual undertones, and psychological portraits. My piece is a sculpture, and it's of a woman who looks like she's in a lot of pain. When I was in high school, I really struggled with bulimia, so I decide to make the woman into an object of consumption. You teach elementary? Yep. What's your favorite project with them? We do like some paper mache pieces that are pretty cool. I choose the portrait of the clown. Totally uninspired, bad motel art. It's playful and creepy. I want to show the difference between those two polar opposites. So now I have a zebra striped cat. Being an installation artist, my goal in my artwork is to change people's everyday experiences. The one thing that's gonna put me above the rest of the competition is my flexible thinking. My plan is to camouflage the cat and slice this cat apart so that the viewer can look at the object in a new way. This past fall, my boyfriend and I were the victims of a hit and run accident. Up until two months ago, I couldn't walk. I like the shape of the totem, and since the accident, I'm always thinking about death, and the idea pops in my head to make it a grave marker. I have this cheesy three-dimensional painting, and it kind of made me think of Scarlett O'Hara. The one thing I know is that I want to deconstruct the image and play with something that deals with identity and race. 
Well, I applied secretly to school, didn't tell my mom. And then was like... Your mom, like, not cool about the art thing, or what? She's okay with it, but she would probably rather I be a lawyer. I moved a lot when I was growing up because my mom is a gypsy who can't stay in one place for very long. Okay. I think that moving all the time affects me as an artist because my process is rarely smooth and I have no idea what I want to make at this point. Looking around at everyone else seeming so focused, it's messing with my head a little bit. What are you thinking? It's earthy. Yeah, definitely. And I want it to transform into heavenly. <gasps> I'm really into transformative work, and this little dough sculpture made me think of a big wreath made of white paper flowers. I do like to compete because I think it makes me better as an artist. It's more like the piece that I selected is a little old man looking over his shoulder with birds in cages, and I immediately connect the little character with Lola. And then you're looking back like you're like you're mischievous. Lola is this sprightly sex pot, and she just looks like somebody who might sneak around stealing birds and then setting them free. Sweet, I think we got it. Thank you so much. Okay. I would become as terrible as the Dark Lord himself. Do not tempt me. Suck Lord is obviously kind of weird, and I think he's going to be an interesting person to know. Go back to the shadow, flame of Udun. You cannot pass. I have to take this picture of Gandalf and make it better, which is going to be kind of difficult because I think the painting is already perfect. I'm going to make like an action figure diorama out of this thing. I'm a little concerned about how long it's going to take. reference piece is a wooden carving of a branch with two birds. My style is freehand line art. I don't sketch and I just let my mind guide my hand. I'm using this technique along with layers, secret codes and messages to create something beautiful in a very abstract way. It looks like Mayan drawing. Yeah, there's a lot more detail that goes into it. He's doing this Keith Haring graphic thing. It's not very original. So he's gonna really have to break out of that if he's gonna last in this competition. How you doing over there, Mr. Two? Uh, making a little ceramic mold. I wanted to build this narrative where this frog made clones of himself. It doesn't work. In the process of that, things got messed up. There was this Franken frog that was born. I may be able to make this guy light up. Perfect. I actually like that it's all Frankenstein together. I'm going to take apart the original piece and use it to make a sculpture that resembles the inside of a human body and then photograph it. Are you going to be in it? When I looked at this weird painting of these dogs, they're doing this social thing, they're playing a game. That inspired me to make an installation. It's going to be performative, and it's going to invite people to interact with me. I think it'll make me stand out from the competition, making sure it fits over my face. Hello, everyone. Hello. How are you all doing? Good. Well, I'm delighted to be here for my first studio visit. Hey, Bayete, how are you? Hey, Salon. Which work did you pick this morning? The Southern Belle-looking lady glancing over her shoulder. I decided to deconstruct it, and I'm playing around with the idea of photo collage. The concept is cultural hybridity and commodification of beauty. You know, when I saw it from far, I think it was even a little better than it is now. I don't know what has changed. As so often, the danger is to put too much stuff on it. You're on the cusp, it can go both ways. You can either do something pretty fantastic, or you could just go too far and kill it. Good luck, and uh, go for it. So, Lola, which piece did you pick this morning? I picked um, this little 3D diorama of a calm vista. How are you going to incorporate your style and, and to 
uh, transforming this. I'm still a little bit unsure. I've been making a lot of tests of things. I'm playing around. I mean, I was thinking about filling this entire thing with sort of different patterns, so it becomes kind of hideously abstracted. Making that. something kitschy into something even more kitschy. Quite frankly, at this stage, I am confused to see in which direction you're going. I just don't really get it at all. I think you should really formulate your idea properly and then try to execute it. Okay. After talking to Simone, I feel down on myself. Freaking out! Coming up on Work of Art. I don't think I improved this piece at all. Someone's getting slow roasted tonight, huh? Morgan, how are Suck you? Suck Lord, please. Suck Lord? Do you prefer me to call you your Lordship, or...? As long as it's somewhat derived from my title, you can improvise on it. Which piece did you pick? Picked the, uh, Gandalf velvet painting. I'm sculpting this figure, and then I'm gonna sort of create a little environment, and it's gonna be sort of action figure but I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be elevated to high art. I feel good about it because you are able to use completely your own style, so I think you should continue and not worry too much at this stage. Then, you know, we'll see what the outcome is. Yes, we will. Thank you so much, Sir Thank Claude. you, sir. So what work did you pick this morning? It was abstract. It had all these pieces of mirror kind of coming out of the center. The piece, absolutely. You can see it's here. Wow. You felt quite violently about this I guess piece. I did. I knew that I wanted to dissemble it and use it as a material to create these kind of intestinal organs. As, as sculptures, you use them? Or? No, they end up as photographs. It looks quite uh, gruesome, what's happened here. And certainly demolished and destroyed this piece. I can show you some pictures on the computer. I would love to see some pictures on the computer. The one that resonates most for me is this one here. You've got your own type of work. On one hand, very off-putting, at the same time, visually intriguing. Thank Trent. you so much. All the best. Bonjour, Simon. Comment ça va? Très bien. Well, I started looking at the dominant colors that were gold and red, and I decided to kind of invert the dominance. My last layer will be my line art. Have you ever heard of Keith Haring? I have, many yes. times. And have you been told before that there is some kind of similarity yes, to his I, work? I'm proud to say this is my own. The issue with it will be with your style, whether it is too closely evocative of Keith Haring. Good luck, and go for it. Thank you. Thank you. I think there's enough room for 10 of the Keith Haring's, 10 of me. It's up to me to just own it. Okay, everyone, you'll have a little time left tonight before heading to your penthouses at the Dillon where you'll be living during your stay with us. I am a little worried about some of you, so I hope you'll get your act together. All the best. I know, but I feel like I'm not doing the best I can do. I'm really worried about Lola. I don't know to like start over and not feel like I failed already. Her process was knocked down. I think she just needs to start on something. Okay. I got a few hours to play before I have to really know what the f I'm doing. I'm wondering if I've done enough to kind of push the concept of race. I'm thinking about what else I can do and how I can collage and add a little flair to it with more layers. Well, I was thinking maybe transform it more. Hmm. Baite seems like he's spending so much time screwing around with the image that his presentation's gonna come up short. working on approximately 10 different things, I'm making some concrete sculptures, and I've completely ripped apart the piece that I got from the Brooklyn Museum. I'm mixing jars full of chemicals, and I'm pouring all this crystal weird water on pieces of paper. I'm hoping that if I try a bunch of different things, that one of them will speak to me. I think it's good. I think I just want to print it bigger and see how it looks. Growing up in Malaysia, deafness is really stigmatized. It's hard for a deaf person to find work. And certainly in the art world, it's even worse. If I win this competition, then people will know that there are strong deaf artists, that our life can be meaningful and expressive. 10 minutes, everybody, so get it going.
Let's go home. All right. Walking to the Dylan penthouse, and it's one of those like oh moments. I'll be in here with you. <laughs> There's two beds. Two beds. I haven't really talked to Twos that much about the gay thing yet. He's probably not someone that I would normally hang out with, but this whole thing is about new experiences, so I'm just gonna roll with it. Are you guys roomies? Yep. I've never lived with a gay guy before. I have a lot of gay friends, it's not a big deal, but I don't know if, how this is gonna work. Very cool. Welcome to New York. Woo! New York's the center of the art world. Being a part of this competition, it's a make or break situation. You're putting yourself out there, but I'm willing to take that chance. Today is going to be our first gallery show. I haven't been this nervous since I got tested for STDs. <laughs> it's true. When I walk in, I kind of take a moment and put up everything that I have. I start to just move around the different elements. When I see them all together, I feel less nervous, and all of a sudden, these disparate things that I've been making kind of make sense together. Ten minutes, everyone. Oh my God! It's alive! It's alive! I am definitely taking a risk delving into subject matter that could deal with identity and race, but I think it has some good conceptual content that will be intriguing to the judges. Artist, time is up. So. You can collect your work and come with me for your gallery show. I don't think I improved this piece at all. <laughs> it's just as kitschy and terrible as the original. I'm kind of worried now that I didn't really put enough sarcasm or commentary in my piece. I don't care. I'm just going to slap it on the wall and let other people make up their mind about it. Coming up on Work of Art. I'm not sure I, I understand it totally. Why should you be given another chance, really? What's cooking up in here? My first impression with Hugo. Hugo is very handsome. She's hot. Yeah. From across the room, I'm like, oh, well, there's the handsome Italian boy. Day one and Lola is doing crazy damage. Well, I thought there's a handsome Italian, but it turns out he's French. Women definitely trigger a lot of creativity in me. And it's not the sex or anything. It's more I kind of leave this fantasy on the canvas. The project. Oh, man, the French guy talking about women. God damn it. to introduce you to your permanent panel of judges. First, we have Jerry Saltz, a senior art critic for New York Magazine. Hi. Hi. Bill Powers, owner of Half Gallery and co-founder of Exhibition A. Hello, guys. And your guest judge, renowned photographer Mary Ellen Mark. Hi. I'm excited and intimidated by Mary Ellen Mark. Her work is beautiful and interesting in these really dynamic ways. It's time to open the gallery. Let's see how you did. like little velvet paint by number painting of a clown. I've done a lot of gallery shows, but I've never done one in New York where there's famous art critics and other celebrities that are attending. So it's on a grander scale for me. It engages you. Someone's getting slow roasted tonight, huh? I feel really comfortable that I chose the piece that I did and I'm happy with how I transformed it. I'm not sure I, I understand it totally. I'm happy with the piece. I am not scared to take risks and not scared to play with subject matter that can be provocative and get people upset. I think it looks good, but I see the faults where the jeans and the shirt should have had more wrinkled detail, but I hope the judges like it. 
piece is called And Mouse. I was interested in leading the viewer with the title so that then they would look for the cat. She cut up a cat. Someone's wired with some C4 there. I'm gonna do it. Oh, cool. I took a kitschy piece of art and made it into a piece about creation. I'm feeling really good. It's more than a tchotchke. I feel really confident about my piece, but having the judges come in and you don't know maybe what you're thinking is completely different than what they're going to think. I wanted to live in a mountain, but then I realized mountains move too. My piece is really personal and revealing. It's about something I used to want, which was not to move so much. I like the way you're using the Yeah, it's like situational. Like yeah. I'm getting positive reactions about the piece, but mostly I kind of feel like hiding in the bathroom or something. Dun, dun, dun. The person standing next to you is more attractive. My piece is literally a live performance with the audience. I hope the judges appreciate the fact that I'm kind of stepping into uncomfortable territory for the very first challenge. I'm trying to engage the viewer in a realization of what's going on underneath their own skin. This gives me goosebumps. There's a big frame under here that's pretty seriously constructed. Oh, yeah. The work I started with was brown, it was very earthy, and what I transformed it to was very heavenly and light, white. It's very, very nice. Hugo. I'm really happy to see how it's presented the way I envisioned it in my head. It feels really good. The judges are completely opaque to me. I'm expecting that they're not gonna like it just because it's a little juvenile now that I look at it a little more closely. It's well, cute. It's cute, I'll take cute. Cute's better than horrible. Thank you for a very exciting first gallery show. We would like to speak to the following artists for the crit. Michelle. Lola, Hugo, Sarah Jimenez, Bayate, the Suck Lord. If I didn't call your name, you are safe. You can say goodnight to your peers. Thank you. Three artists' work was exceptional this week, and we would like to speak to you first. Let's start with Sarah Jimenez. gravitated towards this pretty large sculpture and it was a woman and she had a blindfold on. I immediately began to think of this tension between pleasure and pain. Well, I really love the light, wispy touch that also has a kind of soul to it. And I also really like that it was a material transformation from three dimensions to two dimensions. Is it meant to be kind of a self-portrait? Definitely parts of me came out in it. It's very clever. You draw beautifully. Thank you very much, Sarah. Another one of our favorites tonight is... Michelle, let's talk about your piece. The piece that I chose was a wooden chainsaw sculpture. I kind of had an immediate vision that this really devoted woodsman, he's like, okay, I know I'm going to die, so I'm gonna put this statue in my favorite place in the woods, and then when I'm dying, I'm gonna go crawl to it. I have to tell you, when he first grabbed the piece, I thought, oh no, what is she going to do with this? But it really, really works in this context. You really made something quite incredible. Thank you. And I love your paper sculpture. Thanks. The technique is amazing. I mean, you've even transformed the totem into something beautiful. Thank you. Is this piece personal to you? This past October, a car hit me on my bicycle, and I kind of view living as this really great privilege. I really think you embedded your thought in material. The content is really fused on an almost psychological level. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. There's one more work up for the win. Lola. It turns out that I'm in the bottom. Damn it! 
I was interested in trying to transform what I thought was a really mundane image and making it something personal for me. How is it personal for you? Having moved, you know, 20 times in my life, I dream about really heavy house or, you know, something immovable. I, I love the piece, I really do. Especially the, the paper on the road. It reminds me of a primitive painting. I think it's so inventive. I love that you incorporated sculpture and collage into your work. Thank you. You could look at this for about five minutes and go, oh, this is a painting deconstructed and making this weird dream house with this red light charges up the whole space for me. Thank you very much, Lola. Please join Sarah and Michelle. You all showed us impressive work, but only one of you can be the winner. Congratulations. Michelle, you're the winner of this challenge. Michelle, your work with materials was fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. Being the first winner is super duper exciting. So glad to be starting out and making a big impact with my work. You will receive immunity and cannot be eliminated next week. <laughs> the three of you can head up to the studio. Thank you very much. Girls are the best. One of you will be going home tonight. Bayate, let's start your crit. I played off the idea of Scarlett O'Hara. This particular piece examines uh, identity and how it's expressed and perceived, particularly the cultures of uh, people of color. It, it feels a little too obvious. This is like a racially charged piece, and it felt kind of sloppy and disjointed to me. My hope with this image was that the loadedness of it would be visually captivating and compelling. But what happened for me is that you created a prison of meaning, but the black and white the money. You have to figure out how to say more than just the one thing over and over again. I kind of like to push buttons with my work. It did push a button, but it pushed a button that's always pushed. It's a button that kind of has to keep getting pushed. Cause... But what are you going to tell me that I don't know? Just because the topic is complex doesn't mean that your piece is complex. Thank you very much, Bayate. Ugo, let's talk to you. The uh, original piece of art that I picked up was very intricate and I decided to do my artwork on different layers and use the light to create a drop shadow. I would love to just see your language on the surface of it and I feel like the other layers make it more muddled. Couldn't you still have the shadows without having the back piece? It would just be cast on the wall or wherever it was hung. I have to say that I agree with the overkill of the red on red. For me, it feels a little bit derivative of Keith Haring. They say, you know, good artists borrow and great artists steal, and this feels like something borrowed to me. Okay. This is my secret language, my way to express my inner thoughts and my feelings. Sometimes I, I do draw things like your name is on this canvas. Where is it? I'm not going to show you. I'm going to find it. Well, I hope you find it, and it takes you five hours. Thank you, Ugo. Suck Lord, you're up. Lord of the Rings is my favorite piece of creative work in the world. And what I essentially accomplished was taking a crappy two-dimensional rendition of a stupid wizard and making it into a crappy three-dimensional version of a stupid wizard. You made something that is not art. Yeah, I made the poster in my style. What's uh, your style about that? The character design, the splattering, I guess. The splattering? Yeah, the splattering. Okay. That's what I... You know, all of it is totally familiar, 100%. Well, maybe I'm biased because I love toys. It spoke to me. Okay. What did it say? It said, look at me. I'm kind of glad this is happening to me because if I get a chance again, it could sort of confront all these things. But why going. should you be given another chance, really? Mm, wow, you really got me there. I think, I'm, I, think I might die here. <laughs> There's a sword in his hand. You're free to take it out. It looks really cool, and it's kind of cute. Thank you all very much. You've given us a lot to think about. Please head back to the studio, and we will call you back shortly. Thank you. And they tore us all apart, pretty much. Did they really? 
They gave it to me the worst, I think. Eh. I don't know. I think I was hammered pretty, pretty bad. These three clearly went wrong. Well, I think they turned kitschy art into kitschier art. Why don't we talk about Bayate's piece? It was a cheap shot at controversy. I mean, there was a lot of cliches trapped in that jail cell. Yeah, I agree. The thing is a mess. It looks like almost nothing. Here's the Hugo problem for me. He tackled nothing that's not already seen a billion times before and not even that interesting. Yeah. Why it's in three layers, who cares, whatever. Yeah, the shadows are sexy and what are we talking about? It ultimately felt like wall decor to me. Wow. I think Suck Lord was really successful because his piece spoke to me with the way it was mounted and the frame and the spray paint it was very distracting and I couldn't take the piece seriously. Suck Lord went wrong in his piece by not adding, changing anything. Okay, I think we've made our decision. We have. Let's bring them in. The only rule in art is what works, and none of your pieces did. You go. You were trying to convey your own language, but it came off like you had nothing to say. Suck Lord. You couldn't separate yourself from your subject and made kitsch even kitschier. Baite. You took on some charged subject matter, but had nothing new to add to the conversation. One of you is leaving us tonight. Who go? Your work of art didn't work for us. It's time for you to go. I was wondering if I could just see my piece without the red background. It's okay by me. Oh, wow, it's that easy. All right, guys, thank you. Being the first to go home is disappointing, but I'm still happy with what I did here. I wish he had taken the red background down sooner. Either way, the piece didn't work. Aww. It's sucky for us that you're going. Sucky for all of us. Thank you so much for meeting you, man. All the help. He was a nice guy, but at the end of the day, I'm a super villain and better him than me. It was nice meeting you. Thank you. The door is just opening for my whole future as an artist, so there's really nothing I regret about this experience. Coming up this season on Work of Art. This challenge is much harder than I expected. Ah, the stakes are higher. Oh, give me, uh, like, mother goddess. Confidence is very attractive. A man or a suck or... I don't see at all. What it has to do with what we've asked you to do this morning. That's the most horrible noise in the world. I really don't like these people. Pull it together. Don't f it up. You're actually ignoring me? It's like I'm Jessica. <laughs> this is the art world, baby. Very successful. That's kind of creepy. They kept it simple, stupid. Honestly, this is your last chance to, you know, maybe be here. Your piece collapsed into a piece of generic sculpture with no imagination. I know, I know. I don't really give a f I think this thing has balls. It fails as a work of art. <laughs> <laughs> to learn more about work of art, the next great artist, visit bravotv.com. Matches, pretty matches.